compound P can be used to prepare organic compounds R and Q as shown in the diagram below. And then we are told that in reaction one, alcohol P reacts with another organic compound in the presence of concentrated sulfuric acid. And then uh, the first question, 4.1.1, says let's name the type of reaction represented by one, right? Reaction one. So let's go and do some analysis. So we have an alcohol, and then in reaction one, we have concentrated H2SO4 as a catalyst. And then our product, uh, here's our product. We have CH3, CH2, CH2, carbon, double bonded to an oxygen, and CH3. So we can see from uh, this part of uh, the compound here, this part, that we have an ester. So that will make reaction one to be a starification, a starification, a starification because our product is an ester and then now to the second question 4.1.2 uh, besides the present of a catalyst write down another reaction condition for reaction one so for esterification to take place we need h2so4 as a catalyst and heat right so for 4.1.2 our answer would be heat it's the other uh, reaction condition and uh, moving forward 4.1.3 says that let's write down the structural formula of alcohol p let's write down the structural formula of alcohol p so how can we possibly do that we're going to use uh, compound r right so let me just write down the structural formula of compound r real quick so that we can have a bit of clarity so we have one two three and then we have an oxygen and then another carbon double bonded to an oxygen another carbon and then we have uh, hydrogens elsewhere as you would expect right so uh, this part of our compound comes from the alcohol and then this part of our compound comes from the acid the part of the compound with an oxygen double bonded to one carbon will be coming from the acid and then the other part will be coming from the alcohol. So 4.1.3 says, let's write down the structural formula of alcohol. So now we just write in the structural formula uh, for this part, right? And that will just be propanol. So let's go ahead and have that. So we have one, two, three, our uh, three carbons, and then OH. And then from there on, uh, our work is almost done. We just have to put in uh, the hydrogens and we are essentially done right and just like that we have uh, the structure for our uh, alcohol p right and then uh, moving forward 4.1.4 says that uh, let's write on the iupac name of compound r so compound r is an ester right so this is how you name an ester the first part of the name will come from the alcohol and the second part of the name will come from uh, the acid right uh, so we've already deduced that the alcohol used here uh, is propanol right so the name will start by propine and then uh, the acid used uh, we can see clearly here that it is ethanoic acid so the name will be propyl ethanoid propyl ethanoid that will be the name uh, of our ester compound r so if butanol was used instead of propanol then the name of our ester would be butyl ethanoid and if propanoic acid was used instead the name of our compound will be propyl propanoid that's how we name esters and then uh, moving to 4.1.5 so 4.1.5 says that uh, let's write down the upec name of a straight chain functional isomer of compound r so compound r is our ester right it has five carbons now the question you have to ask yourself is which homologous series is a functional isomer of esters right we know that uh for aldehyde uh this is just me schooling you right it has nothing to do with the question in hand aldehyde the isomer will be a ketone and then for esters the isomers will be carboxylic acid right uh that's how uh, these things work right our ester has five carbons so a carboxylic acid that also has five carbons will be a functional isomer 
of the compound right so the IUPAC name we're looking for here is pentanoic acid pentanoic acid would be the functional isomer of the compound we are interested in and then moving forward to reaction 2 uh, 4.1.6 4.1.6 says uh, let's write down the type of reaction taking place in reaction 2 so in reaction 2 we have an alcohol which is saturated obviously because we know that alcohols are saturated and then our product is another saturated compound right saturated compound it's a halo alkene so saturated to saturated will always be a substitution reaction so substitution reaction so uh, reaction 2 is a substitution reaction as we go in from saturated compound to another saturated uh, compound let's look at 4.1.7 so 4.1.7 says for reaction 2 let's write down the formula of the inorganic compound yeah i know fully well that the inorganic compound there will be h2o but let me show you how so we have one two three uh we have this alcohol here and then let's just uh fill out the hydrogens you know for the sake of clarity yeah so we have uh something of this manner and then plus hcl right and then what is this going to give us uh, this is going to give us so instead of the oh is going to be replaced with cl right so we're going to end up with one two three and then cl in place of the oh and then hydrogen hydrogen yeah let me just fill this out and there we go and then plus everything else that is left out so we have this hydrogen here that didn't get used so we're gonna have plus h and then we have this oh that is getting removed from the alcohol so we're gonna have o h so the byproduct is h2o right so that is our answer for 4.1.7 h2 o right now the last question 4.1.8 uh, let's write down the condensed structural formula of compound q the condensed structural formula of compound uh, q right uh, we already know what compound q is because of what we were doing on 4.1.7 when we wanted to see the inorganic uh, byproduct so we just write in the condensed structural formula of the halo alkane right so we're gonna have ch3 ch2 ch2 cl and just like that uh, we're done with the equation